In this four-part video series, we're going to take a look at Adobe Substance 3D Painter, which is a software for texturing 3D models. Part 1 will cover the basics of the user interface. Also covering things to think about when exporting models from your modeling software into Substance Painter. Part 2 is a more practical example where we will texture the model you see here. In part 3, we will add lights to the ring around the model's head. And in part 4, we will take a look at particles for painting. The model that is used in the examples is the Meet Matte model, which comes as part of the samples in Substance Painter. If you hold down the Alt key, you will get a menu showing you what possible key combinations the Alt key gives you. You can rotate the camera with Alt and Left mouse button. You can pivot the camera around the point where you click. Alt and right mouse button will zoom the camera in and out. Alt and hold middle mouse button moves the camera. You can also zoom camera in and out with the middle mouse wheel. Holding down the control key and right mouse button, then moving mouse left or right, changes the size of the paintbrush. Holding down the control key and left mouse button, then moving mouse left or right, changes the flow setting which controls intensity of the individual stamps inside the brush strokes. Holding down the control key and left mouse button while moving mouse up or down changes the rotation of the brush. Holding down shift and right mouse button while moving mouse left or right rotates the environment. The environment gives your model the lighting. To see how the environment that your scene is lit up with looks like, change the environment opacity and blur. There are several built-in environments that comes with the software, so you can see how your model looks in different lighting conditions. You can also download new environments or take HDRIs with your own camera to get specific lighting. Here's some HDRIs from the free Polyhaven website. This is how you import a new HDRI to use in your project. Here you can see the meat matte model inside Blender. You can see that we have three different materials on this model. A head, body, and base material. When you come into Substance Painter, you will see that the three materials will show up as texture sets in the top right of the user interface. These textures have its own set of layers and texture set settings. With layers, you can build your textures by stacking different things on top of one another to make the textures. In the texture set settings, you can add or subtract different channels. For example, if you do not need height or metallic channel information on a texture set, you can remove it so it does not show up as an option on the layer. Otherwise, you can do a process called baking in here. It will create all the maps that you need for filters and things to work. For example, the curvature map is needed to find all the edges in the model. The Meet Matte model already has all the maps baked, so you do not need to go through this process on this model. But if you make your own model and import it, you will need to bake all the maps yourself. Here are some of the bake properties, where you can select a high poly model. This is used for baking normal or height map information. There are two main types of layers, paint layers and fill layers. We will first look at fill layers. Here we first change the color. The metallic property make the layer more or less metallic. White is completely metallic, black is completely non-metallic. Values in between makes it various degrees of metallic. For example, middle gray makes it half metallic and half non-metallic. Roughness controls how rough a surface is. When it is black, it is not rough at all, and surface is reflective. When it has a white value, it's completely rough and is non-reflective. And again, the varying values of gray is different amounts of roughness. With a combination of metallic and rough, you can make various different surfaces, like plastic, bare metal, and paint. On the base color, you can also use a material. These materials sometimes have parameters, so you can control various aspects of the material. This is sometimes referred to as procedural textures.
The metallic property can also use a texture to control what part of the layer is metallic and which is not. Here you can see where the white circles are, the metal shines through. And where it's black, it's non-metallic. As you can see, these also have parameters for controlling the look of the metallic shape. Roughness also has the same material feature, where you can add a material and control various parts of the roughness properties. Here you can see that the material has a lot of different gray colors, so the roughness is a lot of different values of rough all across the surface. You can use the balance parameter to control it up or down. A normal map makes it possible to add height information without actually putting it into the geometry of the model, making it much more efficient for games. You can enable different channels by clicking the Channel Enable Disable button. Height maps are similar to normal maps, except height maps are grayscale images that define how high or low the data is and only contain information about height and not pixel angle direction, as normal maps do. Filters is another thing that you can add to a fill layer to add various procedural effects to the layer. We will now look briefly on the paint layer. It will be explained and showed in a more practical setting in part 2. You can paint with material mode to get a pattern painted on the model. The alpha affects how the brush looks. You can use alpha to shape the material. The icons on the left hand side is used when you paint on the paint layer. Size, flow and stroke opacity is also relevant when you paint. Flow can also be controlled by using a pen pressure drawing tablet. Smart materials are predefined materials that you can use to easily get a material on your model. If you click on this button on the left hand side of the user interface, you can download a lot more smart materials and other things for use in your projects. To demonstrate masks, we add two fill layers. With a black mask, we hide everything on the current fill layer and show everything on the layers underneath. If you paint with white, you reveal things on the current layer. Draw with black again, it wipes it out. You can also draw with various degrees of transparency by using a different variation of gray. This is, however, not recommended because when you draw something, it will be permanently the transparency you draw. A better solution for more flexibility is to draw with only total black and total white and then rather use the transparency slider on the fill layer. Here is another example showing chipped paint using filters. As you can see, it is easy to control the amount of chipping with the parameters. You can easily add cracks to the surface by painting in the cracks. Another filter lets you easily add droplets on the surface. Now we will look at a couple of things you will need to think about before you export your model from your modeling software and into Substance Painter. The first thing we will look at is how polygons turned the wrong way might look in Substance Painter and how to fix it in Blender. Blender has a couple of different tools for visualizing if your model's polygons are facing in the right direction. The first one is this tool that show light green lines for what direction the polygons are facing. The polygons facing inwards will not have any lines pointing out of it. 
My favorite visualization tool though is this tool. It shows the polygons that are facing outwards with a blue color and the ones facing inwards with a red color. To fix it, just select the polygons that are facing the wrong way and flip them. Substance Painter needs a UV map, which is used in the texturing process. Sometimes it's easier to use the auto unwrap feature in Blender. It has a tool to visualize if you have stretching going on in the UV map. This can help you avoid stretched images when texturing your model. Auto unwrap models is very unlikely to have any stretching going on. Blue is good and orange, yellow, and red is not good colors. It means there is some stretching and the color indicates severity of the stretching. To export your model from Blender, you select export, then select the format. Here, the OBJ format is selected. Then, to import it into Substance Painter, you select New, and then the template to use. Select the file and resolution. If you add a material, you can see the flipped polygon part in the model. In Unity, it becomes even more clear which part has the flipped polygons. It is completely see-through. Another issue that might come up is if you accidentally put vertices on top of one another when you model. To fix this, you should merge vertices by distance in Blender to make sure you do not have any double vertices on top of one another. Sometimes you might have parts of your UV island overlapping other UV islands, and that can cause issues. Here you can see the parts that are selected in the UV map and on the model. If you do have two UV islands overlapping, you can use the overlapping tool to find the overlapping spots in Blender. And when you have parts or the whole UV island overlapping, this is what will happen. Paint will go to both islands where they are overlapping. Moving the overlapping vertices apart will fix the issue. Sometimes automatic UV unwrap might not work as expected or you need to define precisely where the UV islands are supposed to be cut. You can create seams in Blender and divide the UV islands up that way. The next part will be a more practical example, where we will start to texture the model like this.